With overdose deaths on the rise, getting a loved one who struggles with addiction help can be a matter of life or death. But the nature of substance abuse disorder also means individuals are often unwilling to seek treatment on their own. That can leave relatives feeling helpless. South Dakota's current involuntary commitment law for drugs and alcohol is a process that goes through the court system. It can be cumbersome and expensive. One state lawmaker is pushing to change that in the upcoming legislative session. Tonight, we hear from a young woman who says an IVC saved her life. Sina Dover and her 24 year old daughter Sophie have a close relationship today, but that hasn't always been the case. Sophie's troubles started at the age of 12. She says that's when she started smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol. By middle school, Sophie says she and her friends were popping pills stolen out of parents' medicine cabinets. For me, it was definitely how I felt about myself, about life. I was depressed, I was angry, I was hurt, and I wanted to escape reality. So I was always taking her in to see mental health counselors, you know? Counselor after counselor. And What's ironic is that Sina has been in the mental health field for 30 years herself and was still powerless to help her own daughter. After high school, Sophie ended up on crystal meth. I started smoking it and then that progressed to shooting it because I just wanted to go hard. That was just my, that was my goal was to like destroy my life. Sina recounts getting a call that Sophie needed help. She was um, curled up in the fetal position on the floor of the bathroom and, um, you know, obviously high or coming off or, I mean, it was bad. Sina says she tried to get her daughter into treatment, but Sophie, now an adult, didn't think she had a problem. It controlled me. I was a slave to the drug and the lifestyle. Yeah. When she stopped showing up for work, Sina hunted her down. Went into the house and found her on the couch, you know, surrounded by needles. Um, she was messed up. Really messed up. Cena checked Sophie into Avera Behavioral Health, but when she got out, she ran away. Every day, you wait for the phone call. Every day, I would wake up and think, is this the day? You know, somebody's going to come to my front door and tell me Sophie's dead, you know, or is this the day I'm going to get the phone call? Cena began looking into how to have Sophie involuntary committed. I didn't know how they worked, I didn't know how you did them. Um, so I talked to her counselor that she was seeing at the time. And um, she had never done an IVC either. Cena carefully um, documented everything she'd been through with Sophie, paid court and attorney's fees, and got the commitment papers for her daughter. I mean, it was horrible to call the police, you know, and have them take my daughter away in handcuffs to detox. Um, but she's alive, you know. You know what? I was super mad at her, yes. <laughs> and I'm sure I screamed I hated her um, over the phone several times when I was in detox. And um, especially after that IVC, I was, I was livid with her. You know, and I say, you know, mad or dead? I mean, which would you prefer? It actually took a second IVC for the drugs to finally loosen their hold on Sophie. To get clean, it took to be incarcerated for me. Um, there was no other way for me to get clean. In 2015, Sophie told Cuddle Band News how her stay at the halfway house, the Glory House, was also instrumental in her recovery. Definitely a big stepping stone of saving my life. Sina and Sophie are committed to continue to tell their story because of how difficult it currently is to commit someone who is struggling with addiction. Which I think is insane because people die like every day, all the time, from this disease of addiction. It just seems to me there should be an easier process for intervention. And to get people to understand this is very important. It needs attention now, not later. South Dakota Republican Representative Steve Haugard also sits on Minnehaha County's Mental Health Board. Every county in South Dakota is required to have one, and requests for commitments for mental health issues, like suicide attempts or going off medication, go through the boards, not the court system like those for drugs and alcohol abuse. Getting a mental health commitment is free. But the court process for a drug or alcohol IVC can run from $400 to $1,500. With the number of uses of Narcan in our county in the past weeks and the uh, number of deaths from overdose, uh, we absolutely need to respond to it. And our county isn't any different than anywhere else in the United States right now. Everyone has the same 
horrendous problem. Algard wants to expand the mental health board in order to include involuntary commitments for drug and alcohol abuse. Well, it's just the system needs to change, and, and it's, it's one of those things where it uh, needs some attention right now, and, and hopefully we can give it that this year. Algard believes in the long run, earlier interventions will save the county's money by cutting down on jail costs. Sophie is convinced she wouldn't be here if it weren't for her mother's determination to get her help. The fact that I love living and the fact that I love to love people and to help is, that's the success for me. It's a complete life change. Several states are either working on changing involuntary commitment laws for a substance use disorder or have already done so to remove the barriers and make it less difficult. And at least two of those states, the new policies specifically apply to opioid use. Halgard is hoping for widespread support to streamline the process in South Dakota.